That's how it's got to go. Try it one more time. I got it now, Mr. Sheridan. Okay, okay, Joey. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sheridan. What are we going to do, Gypsy? Why did I have to pick a show with a kid tap dancer? Tell me why. We got to have a kid by Monday, Dip, so we're finished. We open in three weeks. Hey, come on. This is the best summer stock extravaganza I've seen in years. There's got to be a kid somewhere. There is. There's one kid who could do it. Who? Where is he? Doesn't matter. It would never work out. Hey, Dips, get us the kid. Let's see him. I'm telling you, it won't work out. Believe me. Come on, Harry. Let's fool around a little. You and me. He's beautiful. An entire Sydney Poirier. Well. going to Broadway. With any luck, you're going to the fourth grade. William, you have time to eat. This is supposed to be your summer vacation. Oh, this is fine, thanks. Just to remind you, a verbal contract was made September 22nd to take me to legal aid court. You have four days in which to fulfill your obligation. We'll have to do it when we get back, Emma. I expected as much. greatest tap dancer, Liz? You're the greatest, Susie. Nobody's better than you. Ah, ah, I want a one and a two and a three and a four. Ah, 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 well, if it isn't my hotshot brother, Mr. Perry Mason of the Eastern Seaboard. You're looking good, William. And you, Jenny, you're looking splendiferous. Thank you. Hi there, Emma. I'll be in conference at the mayor's office all morning, Jenny. Got to be home early. Good. We can start packing for the country today. Bye, sweetheart. One hour, Dipsy. I hear you. I hear you. Oh, now. Let's dance, Uncle Dipsy. Oh. How would you, Jake? Someone should take their boys' tap shoes and bury them in Schenectady.
You are truly and completely disgusting. Emma, how can you go on eating like that? I can't leave you alone for one second. How did that dress fit? Give me that candy. Stand up, please. I want to try and sip this. We can't find a dress that fits you. We have to go shopping in the country. You must have gained 10 pounds since last summer. We can't all be Twiggy, you know. And some of us would rather be Golda Meir, given the choice. I give up. You don't have one dress in this whole closet that fits you. Good. And there's plenty of room in here for my books. You can't take all those law books to the country, Emma. Why not? What am I supposed to do all summer? Go to parties and make small talk with adolescent sex fiends? I don't believe this. Where did you get these, Emma? I can't reveal my sources. I don't know what to do with you. You could be a very pretty girl if you took better care of yourself. You be pretty. I'm fat and I'm smart. I may not get thinner, but I'm sure gonna get smart. Nirvana, Eterna, Juvenile. You're ten minutes late, Emma Sheridan. Save it, Harriet. The 42nd meeting of the Children's Rights Crusade will come to order. Harriet Krepper will read the minute from our last meeting. 41st meeting of the Children's Rights Crusade. Emma Sheridan, President, restated for the billionth time the three basic premises of the Children's Bill of Rights. One, that if grown-ups made laws to make children happy, the world would be a much better place to live in. Hear, hear. Two, that childhood has always been referred to as a happy, carefree time, but it is really a living torture. I'll say. Three, that children should be taken seriously because they are human beings like everyone else, except in many cases smarter. The meeting ended with a decision to draw up a specific list of grievances. Then we all had chocolate Twinkie Tittles, courtesy of Emma Sheridan. Strike that last part, Harriet. It's not relevant. What we really need, ipso facto need, is proof. What kind of proof? We've got to find a test case. One really mistreated child we can defend all the way to victory. That's how law becomes a law. And who's going to be the test case? Yeah, President Sheridan, who is going to be the test case? One, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, a seven, a eight. Look how the door is now, like you own the place. What's going on here? I told you one hour, Dipsy. I meant one hour. Before you get all steamed up, big brother, let me explain a few things to you. There's an audition Saturday for Summerstock, Daddy. You gotta let me do it. You gotta. What are you filling his head with? What audition? It's for a show I'm doing. Been seeing kids for weeks. And if the truth be told, Willie here is the only man who can do it. I won't have this boy dancing on a stage in front of a crowd of people making a fool of himself. I do it. I do it all the time. Most folks think I'm kind of cute. Why can't I, Daddy? What's so bad with dancing anyway? There are better things to do with your life, son. Now, when Dipsy and I were young, our daddy put us in his dancing act because times were hard and dancing was one of the only ways black people could earn a living. We did have some fun, big brother. I have done everything I could, Willie, to make this family proud and respected. I don't want you up on a stage bowing and shuffling the way I did when I was your age. The boy wants to dance, big brother. I don't care what he wants. He's not going to that audition. And when we get back from the country, you're not giving him any more lessons. I think you better go now, Dipsy. So long, little buddy. I think the whole thing went very well. Yeah. You 
You certainly like my suggestions about the housing appropriations. I kept thinking one day you'd be head of that table, the mayor of New York City. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. <laughs> I have some work to finish. I'll be up soon. Emma, it's past your bedtime. I'd like my desk back, please. Thank you. You know, Willie didn't need any dinner. I think he's planning a slow death by starvation if you don't let him audition for summer stock. Good night, Emma. I have one major issue I'd like to bring to your attention. And what's that? Seems perfectly clear to me that the boy child in this family wants to be a dancer. Emma, I don't wish to discuss this. You're denying me my freedom of speech. I plead the first. Very well. Continue. The girl child who already has one of the finest legal minds in the state wants to be a lawyer. And therefore? Therefore, why not let the boy child go on being as crazy as he is and start giving the girl child a little encouragement? In answer to your question, Willie Sheridan is eight years old. Two years ago, he wanted to be a rabbit. I told you he was crazy. And when Emma Sheridan was eight, she wanted to be a butterfly. I may yet be a butterfly. I failed to see your point. The point is that neither one of the offspring in question is old enough to know what they want to do when they grow up. And now, to bed. If it please the court, it's not a question of age. If it please the counsel, it's time for bed. Objection. Case dismissed. On what grounds? On grounds that it's 11.15, one hour and 15 minutes after your bedtime. Obviously, this court is unaware of the Declaration of Independence. Liberty and justice for all, all, not just the middle-aged. Will you cut that out? Cut that out. You want everyone to start laughing at you? Come on, let's trade cards. I'll trade you Thurman Munchen for Reggie Jackson. You can have them. You can have all of them. Are you crazy? You gotta trade. You can't give away Reggie Jackson. I don't want any baseball cards. I just like the gum. You sure are weird. I am not. You are too. You're lucky I'm even your friend. Everybody thinks you're weird. So, I don't have to like baseball. I like tap dancing. And that's just as good. What are you talking about? Nobody likes tap dancing. I do. Mr. Bojangles did. I never heard of him. Everybody heard of Reggie Jackson. So? I ain't everybody. Yeah, I know. You're weird. No, I ain't. I like dancing. And if you call me weird again, I'm gonna punch you in the nose. Let's go. We're gonna be late for the movie. You go. I gotta make a phone call. You're gonna miss the whole beginning. I don't care. There's somebody I gotta talk to. Who? Somebody who don't think I'm weird. You are weird, Willie Sheridan. You better believe it. You're weird. The truth of the matter is, Jake, it ain't all sugar candy. Nobody hands you a dream. You got to fight for it. And you got to keep on fighting until you get it. The trouble here is, I can't help you on this one. This is between you and your daddy. But how can I do it alone, Dipsy? How can I? Sit down here with me a minute, Jake. You've got to talk to him, Dipsy. Please, Dipsy, please. How can I, Jake? Your daddy don't even let me in the house no more. He don't have to let you in. You can just walk in. You're a grown-up. You can do anything you want to. It ain't that easy. We ain't talking about easy here. Jake, listen to me. Listen to me, Jake. You're scared. That's what you are. Well, I ain't. I am going to fight. You wait and see. You're chicken. That's what you are. You're a big, black, scaredy-cat chicken. Willie, come back here. No, I ain't got time for no chicken. I got to go fight. <laughs> Emma, what are you doing? Giving myself measles. <laughs> Think I'm funny, don't you? Sometimes you say very funny things. 
That's a good way to be. Funny people are usually very popular. I'm not popular. I saw a list Alice gets up and Barbara Thought made her. I was second from the last. That doesn't mean anything. You're only 12 years old. You have a long time to get popular. Were you popular when you were 12? I don't remember, dear. I bet you were. Maybe. But I was a lot different than you are. You mean you were pretty? I mean, I probably paid more attention to being popular than you do. For one thing, I didn't keep hoards of candy underneath my bed. And for another, I didn't keep myself buried in books all the time. I'll get it, sweetheart. It's hard to be both. Both what? Popular and smart. Smarts do count for something in this world, you know. Of course they do. And you're very smart. And I'm very proud of you. No, you're not. You'd be a lot happier if I were popular instead of smart. That was Eddie Lewis's mother. She went to get Willie and Eddie at the movie theater. Willie wasn't there. Where is he? Eddie said he left to make a phone call. Never came back. You're in big trouble, Shorty. Out of my way. Where have you been? I've been with Dipsy. Well, you were told not to. I don't care. You got to call him up and tell him I can do the audition. Because he's too chicken to help me now. I've forbidden you to see Dipsy. And I've forbidden you to be out in this city without telling us where you are. He got home safe anyway. I'm going to do the audition and no one's going to stop me. I don't care what you say. I got to do it. I got to be in summer stock with Dipsy. The only thing you have to do right now is go to your room. No! Will he do as you're told? No, 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 no! No, no! Now listen to me. I am the father in this house, and I am telling you, you won't see Dipsy anymore. Oh, and I am no. telling you, you, and you, no more lessons, no more dancing ever. Nobody cares what happened to me. Willie. You all hate me. Willie. I gotta get out of here. Willie, you, Willie, Please. Willie, Willie. Oh. 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 You can go to jail for that. Oh. That's outright child abuse of the first order. How could you let this happen? Well, he should have never gone to see Dipsy. Why not? It's his life. He's looking out for it, that's all. Somebody has to. One day you'll thank me, son. Not now, but one day. You just have to trust that I know better than you do what's right and what's wrong. I'll check in on you when we get back from dinner. I'm gonna help you. How? You're just a kid, too. You're even a girl. But I'm smart. You really gonna help me, Willie? Uh-huh. You wanna dance for me, Willie? Nah. I threw my old captures out the window anyway. What'd you do that for? Look, why don't you just forget about me? You'll be what you want. Dad wants everybody to be a lawyer. Not me. Yeah, sure he does. He's probably just afraid you're smarter than him. You figure? 
sure. You know, Emma, if you didn't need so much, you wouldn't be so bad. You have a pretty face. Sort of. You really threw your old tap shoes out the window. Uh-huh. Night, Willie. Night, Emma. The test case will now enter. That means you, Shorty. You've all been informed of the injustice. I have, as evidence, these tap shoes, which Willie threw out the window after his spirit was crushed. Where'd you get those? Quiet. Is it all agreed that Willie Sheridan Jr. is our test case? All in favor? I'm never going to be able to do it anyway. Shh. The audition's tomorrow. Be quiet. We were discussing a line of attack. I think the biggest problem you're going to have, Emma Sheridan, is courage. Whenever I try to talk intelligently to my parents, they always wind up making me feel totally stupid. Grown-ups never listen to us. They don't think we know anything. As far as they're concerned, an adult is always right, even when they're wrong. Well, I'm not scared. You're not? No, it's too late for fear. I'm tired of them laughing in my face because I want to be a lawyer. They laugh in all our faces. It's not just you and Willie you'll be fighting for. It's all of us. Do you think you can do it? Yes, I do. Why, just the other day, someone said they thought I was even smarter than my father anyway. Who said that? Someone I know in show business. Now, you be quiet. Let me do the talking. I'd like to plead a case if that's all right with you. Emma, Willie should be in bed by now. Oh, that's all right, Jenny. What's the case, Emma? The case is this. My client, Mr. Willie Sheridan, Jr., is being deprived of his life, liberty, and his pursuit of happiness. May I point out that Willie is a minor? And legally not old enough to go out and pursue anything. I still know what I want to do. I ain't got a minor brain. A pursuer of happiness can be any age he wants to be. The Constitution does not limit happiness to grown-ups. We're just the same as you inside. We've got feelings and ideas and dreams just like you. We're human beings. And you treat us like we're nothing just because we're short. You've forgotten what it was like when you were a child and grown-ups acted like you weren't even there. Never made you very happy, did it? I have no comment at this moment, except that it is time for the children in this courtroom to retire to their beds. Come on, Willie. take you there and come back. If they notice you're going and get really upset, I'll tell them where you are. Now, hurry up. Okay. Okay, I'm ready.
you doing here? Do your folks know where you are? No. Nope. You crazy nuts, both of you. Come on, I'm taking you home. Not so fast. You're the one who's crazy nuts, Dipsy Sheridan. You made a verbal contract with this boy and you defaulted. I defaulted, did I? You let me down is what you did. You gave up on me. You don't break promises to children, Dipsy Sheridan. There's no worse crime in the world. I'm 12, and I can take it, but he's only eight. For eight-year-olds, it's cruel and unusual punishment. He'll break, Emma. You're the one Willie put all his trust in. And as soon as the going got rough, you deserted him. And you call yourself a man? Well, you got me there, Emma. How about all of us taking a deep breath and starting all over again? Do you think you can forgive me? I forgive you, Dipsy. I'm leaving Willie in your hands. I expect to see him at the audition tomorrow on time. You know what, Emma? You really should be a lawyer. You look very nice today, Emma. Thank you. I hope you're all packed. Your father wants to leave for the country today at two sharp. Emma, you're eating half a grapefruit. Some people in this world happen to think I have a very pretty face. Sort of. Have you seen Willie this morning? He's in bed. I looked in a half hour ago. He's still sleeping. He's not sleeping. His bed is stuffed with pillows. Now, what do you know about this, Emma? I demand you tell us immediately. You don't have to demand anything. I'll take you to him if you promise to behave sensibly, like the respectable grown-up people you allege to be. Let's go. Thank you, son. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sheridan. All right, now you stay with it. I will. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Me, me, me. Now what? Have we seen everybody? Nope. There's uh, one more kid backstage. Okay, kid. You're on. Let's do the grand finale. If he can do that, he can do anything. Okay, Jake. You're on your own. Do it like I told you. Let him have it. things about it she don't know.
about that, Dave? He's wonderful. That was great, kid. That was great. Terrific. What's your name, little fella? Come on, kid. Who are you? I had to do it, Daddy. I'm sorry. This young man is my son. His name is Willie Sheridan, Jr. 